Unfortunately for us, Manchester United collapsed against Galatasaray at home in the Champions League and the United Twins need to speak about it. Lessons everybody inside, including yourself, CM, getting to kick off the episode for once. You're lucky. But in all seriousness, we knew the situation going into this game, didn't we? Mm -hmm. CM on the watch channel. You labelled it as a must win for a multitude of reasons. Yep. Six losses in our first 10 games this season. And you just felt that if something was to turn the campaign around, it would be an exhilarating Champions League night back at Old Trafford. It seems like the running theme is to come on here and say it was a pretty decent start by United, but it was accurate forward passes really looking to be a serious threat and even before our first Bruno had a brilliant opportunity and should have given the team a 1-0 lead if it wasn't for his lack of contact from a Rasmus Hoyland cross. Speaking of our Danish striker, all game long I felt that he showcased the skills for everyone to see. Excellent. Holding up the ball, turning and driving by out, strengthening defenders and even delivering crosses from out wide. In the box, a massive threat. And when you look at that first goal, he possesses the desire to get into the area as Rashford just lifts up the ball and Rasmus uses the momentum of his run to power that ball in. Bullet header settings. Good signs overall from our summer signing. My biggest fear in Manchester United games remains how open we are after possession is turned over. And that happens a lot. Karem Aktakoglu for me was their main danger man. Picking up pockets of space in the final third even before the danger signs were obvious. Speaking about danger signs however, it seems that on Tuesday Game management was at an all-time low. Is it ever? And I do understand their expectations are low, but even for us, not just after the first, but also the second, we gave away goals in quick succession and the simplicity is quite staggering. Wolf Sahar basically pinning down Diogo Dillo outside the area and it starts from outside the area. And as Davinson Sanchez plays a simple long ball, Dallo wasn't able to recover in time before the attacker capitalises. The ball loops over Andre Onana. Even Galatasaray second. I believe it was Amrabat who launched the ball forwards as he had no short options. Simple header right through our spine. And everybody falls asleep. Merton smartly left the ball and Lindelof got played. Let's be real, he got played. Icardi made up for his penalty miss moments ago. It... I, I don't even know how to describe how I felt at the moment. Maybe even Cappy can't describe how she felt in the moment. Because it was almost amazing to see how simple they were able to score those goals and win the game. And you just have to say Manchester United, creators of their own demise. Andre Onana was... And still is a massive talking point from this game because of how he started at the club. Lacking confidence, making costly mistakes like the pass leading to Casemiro's second yellow. Which means he will be suspended for the SC Copenhagen game on October 24th. Now, of course there will be some favourable, unfavourable should I say reactions. Yeah. My suggestion is that you get behind the player and remove yourself from the past of course there there you know you, you make mistakes in the past and, and you can't run away from that you can't hide away from that but the best thing to do in this situation is move away from that and just look forward look forward back the player uh, he is aware first and foremost he is aware that he's not playing well we've seen him come in front of the camera and have the self-awareness to understand that he is not good enough eric ten Hag, even he's aware of the form and, and understands that he may need to speak to the player and, and and see where he is from a mental standpoint but you could even transition this conversation to how we look as an overall team because of course like i said people were speaking about onana's mistake but you need to speak about our mental fragility as an entire side. How does Ten Hag fix a group of players who in moments of true adversity 
Search for shade. CTC News. Welcome to CTC News, where I will be reporting the latest, greatest, and not so greatest news around the ends of Manchester United. So, without a further ado, let's get to the first story. Onana to focus on United. According to Rob Dawson of ESPN, Andre Onana is reluctant to take time away from Manchester United to play in the African Cup of Nations for Cameroon in January. Onana dramatically retired from international football after a disagreement with current head coach Rigo Bersong regarding his risky playing style. In their final qualifier against Burundi, however, Onana was called up and he also is scheduled to play against Russia and Senegal during the October international break. Do you believe that the Cameroonian goalkeeper should stay or perform for his nation at AFCON? Potentially having a break away from his club side could rejuvenate, especially if his poor form continues. So Jim Ratcliffe and his team are considering purchasing a 25% stake of Manchester United with a plan to take full control from the Glazers in 2026. I know. Ratcliffe's latest revision would see Joel and Avram Glazer remain in full control of the club while Radcliffe initially adopts the role of a minority stakeholder, providing financial assistance for stadium and training facility refurbishments. With this saga still ongoing, 11 months after the initial announcement seeking strategic alternatives, do you see a conclusion anytime soon? Or will the current owners of Manchester United stay firm on their six billion demands? Manchester United are investigating a number of Galatasaray fans who appear to have home end tickets at Old Trafford during their Champions League game on Tuesday. A large section of the away fans gathered in the Sir Alex Ferguson and Sir Bobby Charlton stands and were seen making their way towards the away section to join in with the post-match celebrations. Manchester United believe that touting and sales for official channels to UK-based Galatasaray fans was the cause of this issue, as the only way for home supporters to buy Champions League tickets are through the club's official ticketing portal. UEFA rules state that the visiting association or club must be allocated 5% of the total stadium capacity as tickets for their supporters in the dedicated sector of the stadium. This sector of the stadium must be capable of being segregated from other sectors. The location of away supporters within this sector must be agreed in advance by police and public authorities. And that concludes this episode's CTC News segment. Let me know in the comments what you thought about the reporting news today and any more that follows. But until the next time, chase the chaos. So next up for Man United is Brentford, who are lacking confidence to say the least. They've had some injuries and absentees no doubt, which have contributed to them not winning a single of their last five games in all competition. Now, much like us, they're far from in form, but what does that mean for Eric Ten Hag and Manchester United? There's an opportunity there to get back to winning ways for sure, but as we all know, it's never that simple. So in the comment section below, let us know what you think about the game. Are you confident? Are you not confident? Are you a little in between? And can we see some score predictions perhaps? So, ladies and gentlemen, please be sure to hit the like button. If you've reached the very end, subscribe if you're new. Share to your friends and friend of me. <laughs> And until the next time, we'll see you lot sinner.